Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, RichardDwyer.com. Let's talk about cryptocurrency, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is January the 8th, 2018. Now let me say, here online I've talked about some cryptocurrencies I like. Just Google Dwyer Cryptocurrency on YouTube and those videos will pull up. I also have a playlist, I believe it's called Dwyer Cryptocurrency or Cryptocurrencies. Those videos will be on that playlist. But let me talk about a crypto I don't like right here. Understand a lot of the cryptocurrencies that currently exist are going to fail for market reasons, right? Over time, people are going to find that the specific cryptocurrency isn't as advertised or isn't convenient to use or doesn't fit its need properly, right? You're at a moment here where people understand that blockchain technology is hot that it's a step forward, but they can't yet distinguish <clears throat> between quality and a lack of quality. Well, just understand here, I'm just giving you my opinion, but I'm not a fan of BitConnect, right? BitConnect already has received a cease and desist letter from the state of Texas. Right? If you read up on BitConnect, just Google BitConnect scam, right? Just Google those terms. See what pulls up. Go to their website, watch the videos, ask yourself whether it makes sense. I don't believe it does. My advice to anyone watching this video, and I'm just giving you my opinion right, is to research BitConnect carefully, I believe it's a coin to stay away from. Right, next, let's talk about why crypto is here to stay. I know you've heard a lot of philosophical arguments on Bitcoin being a bubble or Bitcoin not being a bubble, blockchain being some mania versus blockchain being uh, an evolution in financial services. What I want people to do is to explore the website uphold.com. Again, uphold.com. It's a, in my opinion, breathtaking website, especially by legacy finance standards, where you could actually go and exchange Dollars for euros, dollars for other currencies, right? Other currencies for other currencies. You can also exchange certain cryptocurrencies, Litecoin, Dash, my favorite, right? Bitcoin for fiat currencies. And you can then have the website send the money to your bank. Now, I've used Uphold.com, I recommend it. I enjoy that site quite a bit, right? It's one of the best places, in my opinion, where you could exchange, let's say, Litecoin for Dash and vice versa, right? Um, but what's noteworthy on Uphold.com is the fact that, let's say, when I'm exchanging Dash for US dollars, and you get great rates on the site. But when I'm doing that, the dash part of the transaction is quick, right? You can transfer dash to your uphold.com account literally in a matter of seconds, right? That part of the transaction is very satisfying. The part of the transaction that's not satisfying, and it's just because the technology is legacy finance technology that's behind the times, is when you've converted your Dash 
to U.S. dollars on the side. And you want to then deposit those dollars in your U.S. bank account, right? This is a transaction between yourself, right? It's your dollars, and you're just transporting it to your bank account. Folks, that part of the transaction takes days, right? Takes days. Um, the Dash part of the transaction, when I'm depositing Dash in the Uphold.com account, is affordable, right? It's cheap. It's extremely inexpensive by legacy finance standards. But the part where I transport my own dollars into my U.S. bank account, that part's more expensive. <laughs> you know, unless I'm using an ACH transfer, if I do a wire transfer, right, that part actually costs me money. One wonders why anyone would prefer the expensive use of a U.S. bank account over the inexpensive, faster use of cryptocurrency. It just doesn't make sense. You're thinking, gee, you know, money in a U.S. bank account where if I'm going to match the speed of a cryptocurrency transaction, I have to pay <laughs> bank wire fees and jump through hoops. I can't just put in an address and hit send, right? Or if you have an encrypted wallet, right, put in a password, put in an address, hit send. That's cryptocurrency, right? You're not contacting a banker. There's no middleman who has some power over your money. You're not contacting a banker to say, gee, can you help me transfer this money from my account? Let me also say too, you own some cryptocurrency, you know, there are no monthly charges for doing so. No bank is trying to convince you that to hold your money you have to pay a monthly fee unless you have the minimum agreed upon amount in your bank account, right? Shouldn't the bank in this fractional <laughs> banking era be grateful that I'm depositing money with them? How could they be charging me for using my money to deposit it with them, right? I believe as time goes by, people are gonna realize how inefficient and how absurd legacy finance is, right? People are gonna wonder, why am I paying these wire transfer fees when I can do this transaction for a fraction of the cost a hell of a lot faster using cryptocurrency? Right? Your expectations are going to change. The level of service you demand is going to change. As the world slowly realizes that cryptocurrency is not only faster, it's cheaper. Right? We don't even have to get into the fact that some cryptocurrencies, right, Dash, Zcash, Pivx, actually offer you privacy. Right? Something, something you're not getting with legacy finance. Finally, let me say this. Uh, pay attention to the entrepreneurs and the investors who understand cryptocurrency. Right, One of them is the legendary, and I mean it, Tim Draper, D-R-A-P-E-R. Google him of Silicon Valley. Right now, Draper, of course, is someone who has made millions on Bitcoin. Right? He believes that blockchain technology is here to stay. That we are in the middle of a sociological revolution where people are understanding 
that this is a big step forward. The cryptocurrency offers great utility, right? That the value proposition of cryptocurrency is compelling. Now, I know the press loves to hear quotes from people involved in legacy finance criticizing cryptocurrency, folks like Jamie Dimon. It's as if we're supposed to believe that Jamie Dimon is more of an entrepreneur than someone like Tim Draper or someone like Richard Branson, the billionaire, right? We're, we're somehow supposed to discount billionaires who actually have knowledge of cryptocurrency, who actually use cryptocurrency, and we're supposed to believe people running competing shops whose you know, professional existence is dependent on the survival of legacy finance. Right? It's like hearing about Ford from a General Motors dealership. Well, let me say this. Tim Draper has set up what's called a special purpose acquisition company. It's a SPAC. I want you to Google the term. S-P-A-C. Right? Draper's SPAC is called Draper Oakwood Technology Acquisition. Right again, it's Draper Oakwood Technology Acquisition. Now it's very hard for startups, even innovative startups, to go public, right? To be publicly listed. The entrepreneurs are spending their time on the product, on the technology, right? They often are people who are creative. Right? They're creative types who are developing a new, faster, more efficient way of doing things. And they might not have an expertise in dealing with securities laws and jumping through the hoops of the SEC to actually get approval to be publicly listed. This is where a SPAC comes in. Right, Draper, venture capitalist, sets up a corporate shell, right? The shell's up and running right now. You can invest in the shell. It's publicly listed, right? The Draper Oakwood Technology Acquisition Group is up and running right now. And their goal is to find the next great startup in technology and to then merge with them so that the startup group then becomes publicly listed. In other words, they streamline the process by which a startup with great products, with huge profit potential, can be publicly listed in a very fast manner. Right? Of course, investors who invest in the SPAC before the merger get a lot of profits. Once, of course, the merger takes place and the startup's products hit the market. Right now, in the world of venture capitalists, just understand that Tim Draper has few peers. What you need to do if you're interested in this kind of investment is to fully research Draper Oakwood, right? Research the people involved. Research Tim Draper's investment history. I believe you're going to be impressed. Just understand, too, that entrepreneurs like Tim Draper, who are aware of the profit potential and utility of things like cryptocurrency is going to be attuned to startups involving cryptocurrency that have huge upside. Right? So, you know, in terms of investment opportunities, and Lord knows, right, there are a lot out there. I think if you're looking for, you know, a group that is 
aware of and attuned to the opportunities in the cryptocurrency space, as well as, of course, the technology space, right, which has been Draper's bread and butter over the years, then I think this SPAC is something to consider. Again, it's a special purpose acquisition company. You need to Google and research the concept. I believe this is an opportunity for people outside of Silicon Valley's inner circle to actually have access early on to the profit potential of successful startups. Anyway, I hope you give it a look. And uh, if you take away one thing from this video, it's that if you're remotely considering investing in BitConnect, please Google BitConnect cease and desist letter. Google BitConnect scam. Find out why there are people out there who question this company. I can tell you I would never invest in BitConnect myself personally. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me do something here that uses the interactivity portion of the internet. If you're a BitConnect fan, holder, adherent, believer, YouTube has a comment section. What I want you to do is in the comment section to this video, Tell us why BitConnect is not a scam, right? Give us your views. Tell us why you believe in BitConnect. Tell us why BitConnect actually is using Bitcoin and things like that. Um, tell us why this system where people are supposed to get triple digit returns from investing as part of the BitConnect scheme is remotely sustainable and is superior than investing in Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, etc. Let me also say this too about Ripple. Uh, many people have come up to me to talk about Ripple, which has been on fire lately. Right? Just to understand, I'm a libertarian. I'm really looking for decentralized cryptocurrency. I'm not looking for cryptocurrency that is trying to appeal to the Jamie Diamonds of the world, the legacy finance people, right? I believe that decentralized cryptocurrency, right, is more anti-fragile, to use a term from Nassim Taleb. It's more resilient. It has more upside than any cryptocurrency relying on the banking industry to be their customers, right? Not the account holders, but the actual banks themselves, right? On philosophical grounds. And keep in mind, I'm looking for profits like everyone else. But on philosophical grounds, one of the things that appeal to me deeply with cryptocurrency is its decentralized nature. Right? The fact that it's widely owned. Right? That it's not some niche that is just, you know, benefiting traditional banks. That's the way Ripple looks to me. So while I respect Ripple as a valid technology, right? On philosophical grounds, I'm not a Ripple investor. Anyway, that's how I see it. If you have comments about Ripple, which has been in the news lately, I hope you leave those comments in the comment section to this video. Also, if there are any cryptocurrencies that you want the subscribers here online to know about, please feel free to mention them in the comment section to this video with links to websites you feel people need to know about. Finally, if you feel that there are other coins out there 
that you disdain, as much as I personally disdain BitConnect, then I hope you leave comments about why investors should stay away from those coins in the comment section to this video. Let's have a discussion. The key here is to increase the information flow about cryptocurrency. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. I look forward to reading your comments.